Hi, Minster here. This video is an update on the Pure Chaos build. It's a solid build with awesome playstyle. It died around level 91 on the Hardcore Essence League in the core map. Don't be discouraged by that fact, any life based character is bound to die in a tier 15 plus map. Time to explain the mechanics of the build. To refresh your memory, this build uses two obliteration ones. Each give 20% chance to explode a corpse on kill. A corpse can only explode one time, but the chance stack. So while dual wielding, they're good for 40% chance. Originally, these ones were used with the skill kinetic blast. They're still more than good enough to be used for spells, and the explosions are awesome, and the 2 times 15 is 30% extra chaos damage is a big deal. Let me explain the explosion mechanic. The damage is based on single player life of a monster. That means it does not stack in parties. This build can hold its own without the explosions, but the charm of this build and why I love it so much are the chaining explosion that can clear your screen. With small packs of monsters this might not happen, but every time you encounter a loot box or a shrine the magic begins, and if you roll your map with high pack size it will speed up your clear speed. The 20% damage can be scaled up with modifiers like damage, chaos damage, AoE damage and of course the 40% damage from Berserker scales it as well. It's the main reason why the Berserker Ascendancy is picked. With the 40% multiplier you are sure to scale the 20% to 100%. 100% needed to one shot another monster for the chaining effect. That means you need roughly 250 increased damage from other sources against a zero chaos resist target. This character had around 220 increased damage, but could easily spec into the chaos wheel called Method of Madness to reach 270. And there are of course temporary damage buffs like Rallying Cry and the Berserker 15% increased damage when you got hit. The damage can crit, not all sources of crit work of course, so it's not really reliable. Finding a crit shrine results in spectacular things. There's also danger. It cannot reflect damage to you, unless it's a special kind of lightning thorns, but it can proc corrupted blood, both from magic monsters as rare. So you always keep your staunching flask handy. This danger is compensated by the fact you can leech of this damage. Berserker for the win. On a side note, if you're a pathfinder, the explosions can poison enemies. To get chains of explosions, you need AoE and damage, preferably 100% damage explosions. To get a lot of AoE, you'll have to take all the sources you can find. That includes a Cargus Jack. You might get more defenses from a different chest, but this build specializes in the explosions, and that's where the fun is about. So even on Hardcore, I suggest you use a Cargus Jack. Here you see the Berserker find its way to the boss room. Mass explosions every pack. It is good not to jump into the middle of the pack, but just kill the weakest monsters on the outside and let their corpses handle the rest of the pack. That gives a lot of safety. And while running around, now and then you stumble on dead packs that you accidentally have off screened. These bosses can be hard, but while you can keep leeching, they are not too much trouble. The poison damage is insane. Far Lightning Trap gives a nice 50% more multiplier and Culling Strike setup is good too. This build will never be the best boss killer since those builds use a curse on hit setup and use their mana for more damage auras. Double blasphemy curses however is easy mode and great for clear speed. Time to do an overview of the gear and tree. Double ones in the carcass jack, the rest is not set in stone. I personally like to gain additional curse from an item instead of the skill tree. Furthermore I can advise you to take the commandment of blades gloves enchant. It deals physical damage that is scaled by a lot of your damage sources. An interesting touch is the synergy of Vortex Chill with the Slovan Temporal Change. Since the build lacks decent defenses like block or armor evasion, I decided to run a Rummy and a Basalt Flask to compensate. If you go for this specialized build, you can't really make any concessions, like dropping a wand for a shield and you only have 20% chance to corpse explode, or dropping the carcass for something else and your chain explosions might stop early. It's a fun build and I can advise you to throw everything you got into the obliteration. I spent a lot of time gathering good jewels. I started out with life combined with either damage or AoE damage and the mod dual wield spell damage is rather cheap. Interesting for this build would be the option to go crit. It would cost a lot of life nodes but the crit nodes are all close and you make a huge impact. But that's probably best safe for softcore.
Now there is a way to manually trigger the 100% leads with an unique Teudris flask. I had little practice with it and I didn't want to start experimenting with it on hardcore. I didn't want to give up a flask pot either. Taken damage will trigger the cast when damage taken as well. And since it's located in the gloves, the cast when damage taken will trigger the gloves enchant. This enchant is called Commandment of Blades and can be used to one shot a complete pack and off screen. So this close combat blade vortex build can off screen and then some more with the chain reaction explosions. Yes, it's good good fun to play. The remainder of this video is me trying out the Deidre's flask, as you can see it takes some calculation to make it do the correct amount of damage. If you have high chaos resist because of Atsiri flask or because Devoto's helm, you might not take enough damage to activate the 100% damage leech. Trial and error if you want to use the Deidre's flask. If you want to kill the biggest bosses around, you might need to bring one or two. Well, that was it for now, thanks for watching.